as part of the module 3 that is etl with spark so let us uh, go to the next topic that is advanced data transformations in the previous uh, videos that you are following uh, so you have uh, already learned how to work with databricks uh, with the basic commands uh, sql like commands and in this video let us take some advanced data transformations uh, how can you uh, work with uh, some uh, advanced data transformations uh, which can help you in terms of parsing the data or uh, querying the data so before uh, proceeding if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press that bell button for instant notifications so let's get started so in this uh, video, so this is the agenda that uh, we are looking to cover in this uh, video where uh, we will see how do we work with uh, JSON data. So how do you interact with JSON data? Because if you are familiar with the JSON data, so it will be having a, it might be a flattened JSON or it might be having a nested JSON. So when we say nested JSON, it will, it might be having uh, multiple levels uh, of uh, nesting within that uh, JSON data, right? So that we will see in a few example how the nested JSON uh, data looks like and how to interact with that uh, nested JSON data, right? And also how do you convert the JSON data into a struct type? So if you're already uh, aware of a Spark, SQL or some kind of a programming language uh, and working as a data analyst or data engineering with such kind of programming languages, you might have already he heard or worked with the uh, struct type. So struct type is also one of the data type uh, which allows you to kind of uh, uh, work with uh, this kind of uh, nested data uh, so very uh, easily so that that also we will see when once you fit this JSON data into struct type how, how it will help you uh, in terms of uh, 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 parsing that data right and also we will learn about a nested data types and also we will go with the working with the different kinds of uh, I mean with working with array with different kinds of functions like explode and collect uh, so we will see how uh, with uh, some uh, certain examples and also we will see some uh, join operations set operations uh, like uh, union all union union all of those kind of operations uh, set operations and also finally we will end with some uh, higher order functions we will understand what exactly higher order functions means and uh, there are few higher order functions like exists filter transform reduce etc so Without uh, any delay, so let's go to the actually a working model and working session and uh, let us see the examples of this and uh, understand in detail. So now coming to the practical examples, uh, so let us take uh, one example where uh, you might be getting data from uh, like any kind of a streaming systems or kind of a devices uh, that you have. Uh, uh, like IoT devices, like the data might be coming from Kafka or uh, the data might be uh, coming from IoT event, IoT hub or event hub for that matter, right? And uh, typically it will be in the in this kind of format where you have a key and value. Uh, key might be a device ID or sometime uh, just an ID or a timestamp and value will be having like a payload uh, with is having a JSON, right? So in this advanced transformation, let us understand how to deal with the JSON. So if you are uh, new to this uh, JSON format and you are hearing for a uh, first time regarding JSON, so let us understand a uh, little bit about JSON before we get started. So one JSON format uh, that we were seeing here uh, in the data breaks, uh, I have taken into a notepad plus plus, uh, which we are calling as a payload, right? And uh, JSON is nothing but it's a JavaScript uh, object notation format uh, where you kind of uh, Typically, it is generated in uh, any, any web streaming uh, or uh, kind of a devices, uh, this kind of uh, uh, or kind of a server logs, uh, this kind of a JSONs are generated. Uh, and that's where uh, the JSON format is kind of a, uh, one of the most commonly used in data engineering uh, nowadays. And uh, as you can see here, so this is what we call it as JSON. And let us start with the simple JSON, right? So if I just uh, take this kind of uh, where you just see a key value pair, key value pair, key value pair. So this is a flattened JSON. So it doesn't have any nesting, right? However, uh, if I see this example now, so you can see the geo is further split into a value, which is again a JSON, right? So key is a simple uh, value, but actually a value is again getting as a JSON. So that is called as a nested JSON. And uh, this nesting, 
can uh, further uh, i mean one element can have a array also which is again kind of uh, like uh, this kind of array right so this is one uh, arrays are usually uh, if you see it's uh, enclosed by a square braces and this is one array right so it can have a number of array like this right so this items is having two arrays basically i mean two elements in an array that exactly it means right and uh, so this uh, this is the nested json what we call because it's having a nested nesting of values and this can this nesting can go any level like the city can further get nested right and it can have again uh, like uh, this kind of json inside value like this right and it can have different values so something like that so that is called as nested json so in this uh, advanced transformations uh, so we've already taken uh, the data which is coming as a value which is a payload which is having a nested values right so now as you can see spark sql has inbuilt functionality to directly interact with the json data like say for example you are using the colon symbol here right so you just use a value and then tell what you exactly need i mean what column you need what attribute you need right so if you just go back to this right a json so what is the device so value colon whatever whatever the key that you refer right so value and then the key right that you will get as a uh, whether it is a windows device whether it is coming from what exactly operating system it will give you and also if you can just uh, see this example where you can go to the any levels right so as you can see you have a geo here and inside geo you want to go to city or inside geo you want to go to state so that you can specify here so in this example i'm just giving city and it is able to traverse to that particular city in this particular json right so and it is displaying a hikroi uh, as a city here and then similarly you can give state and you can play around with those examples uh, here the main important thing is uh, the use of this uh, colon symbol right uh, so that you need to kind of uh, use it to go to the multiple uh, to basically pass to the multiple levels of nested json basically if you're already well aware of uh, spark sql it is uh, it works very well uh, or it has a capability of uh, parsing json object uh, into a struct types right so similarly but we can do it but however uh, the from json function requires a particular schema so the data should be in a particular schematic format uh, so that you can work uh, or you can convert json format into struct format right so how do we do that if you see this is the so here we are just taking a, we are just applying filter here where value equal to finalize and basically you are taking one value by limiting one value here and you are just reading a value right so you're just reading a value in the sense you just want one payload as, as example you're just taking one payload as an example so now that payload i'm just giving as a as you can see schema of schema of json so and flower uh, i mean that there's a bracket open and there is a bracket close as you can see here from here to here right so here inside this uh, i'm just giving uh, the one payload as an example right i'll just take the one uh, taken one payload as an example and I have, if you can closely observe it is uh, starting with a single quote and ending with a single quote so basically what i'm trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to evaluate the schema of a particular payload and then give that schema to the from JSON so so that it can be converted into struct type okay so as you can see here so this schema of JSON here this function is uh, dynamically evaluating the schema of this JSON right and giving it to from JSON function which is outer function right and uh, so then what it actually doing is uh, so uh, basically we have taken one example of json but this schema is uh, we are applying to the entire table as you can see here uh, we are reading it from the event stream one schema we are taking uh, example of one event and uh, schema extracting the schema and applying that schema to the entire value because we are assuming that uh, the schema will be same uh, for all the events that are coming in and then as you can see once the schema is evaluated and we are able to query 
So this completely turns up into a struct type. As you can see, why we are telling it as completely converted to struct type is, you can just see here it is giving the hierarchy, right? So as like you can see, you can traverse to uh, different levels here, right? Hope uh, this is clear. Let's move forward. So next step, uh, once we connect a struct type, so the li our life will become easy. So when, when we say easy, so it can be easily queryable, right? So as you can see, uh, if you just do a JSON dot star from this past event table, that is a output of previous table. So then the output will be something like this, as you can see. And uh, so each uh, values will be coming with this, with its own uh, kind of uh, uh, attributes. So wherever it is a nested attributes, you can see the nested values are coming there, right? You can see geo is coming again this way, right? So as you can see, it, it becomes very easy to kind of query or apply any transformations uh, after we do this. And uh, since we have already uh, kind of converted into struct type, uh, so basically uh, let us describe that events, right? So as you can see, uh, the events, uh, like when we just took the, the data that we are getting as an event, so if we describe the table, so it actually says uh, which column is of what type. So this is a string type and this e-commerce is a struct type, so, so and so forth, right? And items is an array type. So it basically able to identify. So that's the beauty of uh, parsing the JSON and converting into a, I mean, getting the schema of that uh, JSON and converting the entire table into a uh, struct format. And once you convert the struct format, uh, so you are able to kind of uh, see here uh, that it is dynamically or uh, automatically kind of uh, recognizing the data types. Basically it has uh, applied the data structure to the data. And uh, as you can see, e-commerce is one value here, uh, one attribute value. And if you want to see like a few few cases, it is having null values and few cases we are actually having uh, the values, right? If I want to get the this 1195, which is of a purchase revenue in USD from this e-commerce table. So let us understand what we can, how, how, do, how can we query this, right? Basically, uh, this can be queried in such a way that e-commerce dot uh, Purchase revenue in USD because uh, e-commerce is uh, nested adjacent, right? So it is having a further levels. So if you want to get to the next level, previously we were using a colon. Now we are using dot because it is already converted to, to now a particular struct type. So now let us start uh, to understand how do we work with arrays, right? So in arrays. Uh, as you know, array is nothing but a set of elements that you have, right? Uh, it might be having a number of elements inside a array. And uh, for example, uh, you can see here uh, from this events table. So if you want to get the, the only the records which are having uh, the array of elements uh, greater than two, basically, right? So in this, uh, so this is not an array. US user ID is not an array. Events, uh, event timestamp is not an array, but items is an array, right? So items is typically a array and you want to get all the events which are having the items with the array elements greater than two, right? So if you can see here, zero, one, two, that is, it is having three elements in a item, item array, right? So that's where it is giving the results. So that means we are understanding how to kind of work with arrays. So now I'm just giving an example. So you're getting size of uh, items or size of arrays greater than two. You can uh, use all the array transformations uh, on, on this kind of uh, attribute, which is of array type. So now let us understand little uh, more complex operations uh, of uh, arrays, right? Say for example, uh, you have a row, particular row, which is having like array of three uh, items, right? So there is a three items. And you want to kind of, there are three items, you want to explore that. So when I say you want to explore that, you want to duplicate the entire row, right? Only the item will change. If you can see the first three rows here, so the entire array is duplicated. If you see, right? So it is the ID is same, ID is same, ID is same. And even timestamp is also same. Event name is also same. Only what actually is different is, uh, it was an array of three elements. So now the it was having array of three elements but in a single row right but a single row is now uh, made into a three rows 
right if you can see this is one two three so previously it was all these uh, three elements that you see in the item right so this was one two three was in a single row now it has exploded into a multiple rows say for example you can uh, consider like where you are having a purchase right you do a, go and uh, purchase something and there will be one invoice generated for all the items right and but you want uh, the in the database you want to enter uh, item level uh, into the database not at the transaction level right so then you will explode that so that you will have the number of transactions uh, which are equal to the number of products purchased or the item purchased so that's where you kind of use uh, this kind of uh, explode functions so now uh, if you understand a few more complex uh, array transformations uh, like uh, let us take it collect set so let's go one by one so collect set if you see this function can collect the unique values from each field right including uh, fields within a array so let us take this example where we are applying collect function on event name so what what exactly it does right so if you go to the event name uh, so this is an event name and we are giving this as an event history right so we are taking entire event name here so the important thing here is you are doing a group by user id that means for each user id give me the unique event history for each user id if you can see this is one user id so the 6861 is one user id which is having like three unique event history similarly if you go to uh, this guy 988 he is having like uh, five uh, unique event history so that is uh, that is uh, uh, like a collect set basically so set is what so set is uh, set operation is always to remo remove the duplicates collect it and then set it that means get only the unique uh, events and uh, if you see the the next operation uh, that is flatter so if similarly the collect set you here also we are using that means you are getting the uh, set of item ids unique item ids you are getting it and then flatten it flatten when you say flatten what exactly you are doing getting the items and then flattening it multiple arrays into single array right so you are kind of a flattening it into a single array bundling it in single array so array means you are just giving 0 1 2 3 as a you are just numbering it so that it will become one array and then you are taking a distinct so that means you are du removing all the duplicate from that array so even after uh, giving them or collecting them as a single array there might be dist there might be duplicates uh, in that particular array right so that array distinct will remove it and then finally you see that cart value so cart value if you see it is again a uh, array only but it is having a distinct uh, values because you are applying a red distinct hope this is clear yeah so basically you need to uh, kind of uh, use this uh, examples and do uh, some kind of a practice so that you will uh, kind of uh, able to digest this uh, in your own uh, sense similarly further uh, like if you are uh, work with a sql kind of a programming uh, or a scripting language so definitely we might have worked with the joins so joins is uh, very simple in any kind of a uh, querying language right so and uh, so there will be different kinds of la uh, joins inner join outer join uh, right join right and uh, so i'm not going to explain what exactly here uh, what kind of join when to use what kind of join but just want to show the example so how the joins can be applied and what is the syntax for applying these joins right so basically there will be a when you're joining tables so either you need a right hand side and left hand side you need two tables basically it can be a two different table or it can be a same table basically if you are using a self join you can use the same table if you are using joins with the multiple tables uh, basically there will be lhs and rhs so here if you can consider uh, so this is a lhs right and uh, the output of this will be lhs and then item lookup is uh, one more table where you are using as a rhs and then right hand side and left hand uh, side tables you are applying a join so you need to specify what kind of join you are applying between these two uh, inner join left join outer join whatever kind of joins you want to apply based on the scenario and then so what is the condition so condition starts with on and then you need to give the alias of the particular table and tell what exactly column that you are using for uh, joining right 
and then join those two tables that's how it works right and similarly you can use left join right join whatever join you want all right so this is just want to kind of uh, show you that as example and uh, so explode function you are already aware of uh, basically that is being used to kind of uh, uh, explode the arrays into multiple line items now uh, you can also uh, use uh, the union operation union operation i don't want to go in detail because it is most commonly used in sql like uh, sql like transformation you can use union and union all so if you are uni using union so basically the main criteria is uh, both your lhs and rhs table should have equal number of columns the data types and the column names and then if you are doing a union so it, it is called as a union compatible and then you get the results as is right so the and you can use union to get uh, uh, where it, it it get all the duplicates as well from the right hand side and left hand side table but if you want to get only distinct you can use union all right and similarly yeah for all this uh, set operation maybe union minus intersection the basic criteria is both your lhs table and rhs table should be having same column names same column order and same column data types so if you're having that and then you can perform all the set operations so minus operation is nothing but uh, uh, take all the records from your uh, uh, your lhs table that is first table and then uh, uh, all the rows from that first table and then if they are found in the second table so just remove all those and give only the uh, after that or just give the uh, result right removing uh, those records and intersect is nothing but yeah like it's a simple set operation again uh, you just get the data from uh, both lhs and rhs rows from both lhs and rhs and which are present in both the lhs and rhs table so that will be the result of your intersect so here you can use instead of union you can use minus right and then you can use intersect that's uh, as simple as that so now let us go to the final operation uh, one of the like uh, typically used in any data kind of analysis basically right so that is uh, the pivot so pivot is nothing but you want to kind of uh, uh, apply kind of a uh, aggregated value based on specific column values right so which will be turned into multiple column values so basically like if you see here in this example right so we are using a select statement so the select statement inside the parenthesis is the input for the this table as you can see here so inside this there is a in plus right and a pivot the first argument in this class is aggregated function and the and the column to be aggregated so this is aggregated function right and what what column we want to aggregate based on and then you specify the pivot column uh, using the for basically uh, subclass and then there is a in operator here right so uh, what exactly you see these are the, it is very important to observe the keywords here so this is just a table right so this is typically just a table you are getting the uh, values from a particular table and then in this for this table you are applying a pivot on what pivot for which column pivot on aggregated value there should be some aggregated value so what aggregated value on quantity you are applying so this is coming from this exactly this table and aggregated of a particular column for what you are applying for the item id so item id is also column and in the in class you have to specify it can be a list right uh, coming from a table or you can just uh, specify like hard coded value like this so once you kind of uh, get this uh, uh, kind of a uh, this is basically important to understand the syntax here right there is a keyword let's understand the keywords right keyword is there and then this is a aggregated value and then there is a for and then on top of what you are ex uh, uh, aggregating it and then there is a in plus and then followed by the values so let's understand the syntax very clearly here so as you can see the result of this pivot uh, that we have applied here so here we have used a pilot to create a new transaction table you see basically we had a transaction table but now we are creating a new transaction table that flattened out the information contained in that sales table right because we are ag aggregating based on the 
quantity here uh, and then applying on the item ID okay. so this kind of uh, uh, pivot can be used uh, where we want to flatten the data and format the data especially for the dashboarding purpose or but can be also used for machine learning or uh, any kind of predictions so uh, you can uh, basically experiment this uh, uh, with uh, certain examples uh, pivoting with certain examples so you can understand much better uh, finally, let's go to the higher order functions. So if you are uh, worked with a SQL kind of a programming language, so this will be a completely new, to new topic or new uh, uh, concept basically. Uh, the reason is, uh, so these kind of a syntax or these kind of operations uh, doesn't exist uh, typically in the SQL uh, world. So what is higher order function, right? Higher order function is a Spark SQL that allows you to work directly with the complex data type. Data type. That means, uh, so this is not for the common data types like integer or string or kind of a, a flattened uh, kind of a data type. Uh, so which is uh, which is easily readable, right? So it is for the complex data types like array, struct, or uh, uh, like there's a multiple nesting, right? So where uh, the, the data is a hierarchical or nested format basically right and uh, so this uh, there are different uh, as you can see there is a filter there is a exist transform and reduce so let's try to understand one by one so here uh, as i was telling so this syntax might uh, little bit look uh, different or little little bit lo lo look weird in terms of if you are uh, new to this because as you can see filter is uh, like the syntax right it's a keyword so, uh, then the, the keyword is followed by items so what exactly it's an attribute name or a payload basically here in our case uh, and uh, basically for each of the items i is nothing but for each of the items uh, so you want to take item id and then if the item id is containing uh, k i mean percent is k that means uh, it starts with k right so then uh, basically uh, you, you kind of categorize uh, the just filter that out so basically it removes the items that are not king sized right, for all the records so basically here it is used to remove basically filter out when you say filter you are just sort of filtering in it's filtering out so remove all the items that are starting with key basically that's what exactly we're telling here to exclude those values from that array so Let's take an example, right? So as you can see here, uh, the king items, right? So the king items, if you go on uh, traversing, right? So in the king items, you don't see any items here, uh, which is starting with, uh, which is not uh, king, right? So uh, it, it has uh, removed all those values particularly. And please note that, so this is not removing the row. It is just removing the element in an array, right? So that is filter that what is doing right because we are not applying a row level filter here it is a actually a, uh, a particular uh, array item level filter that we can call it. so that's the difference right and so this is a concept of a lambda function if you are use a python or some programming language where there is a concept of lambda function so it's very similar to that lambda function Next is uh, exist, right? So exist is a test whether a statement is true for one or more elements uh, in an array. So exist, you can see, I uh, just uh, replaced uh, the filter with exist here. So what it exactly does, the syntax uh, almost remains the same, right? So you can use kind of a lambda kind of a function. Uh, however, it just uh, gives you the true or false, right? So whether this particular item is having a array element, uh, 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 array of element is considering uh, to have a non-king or non-k, right? So it is. If it is like k, so then it will use true. If it is not like k, it will give false. Any uh, any items in that array. Okay. So because you are trying trying uh, to traverse each and every elements in the array and then find finding if there is any k. Right? If there is any uh, k, so then it will use otherwise it will use false. Say for example here if you see right uh, wherever it is true condition you can see standard king matrix matrices right however if you see uh, in this uh, that, that is the reason it is king it is having king as a uh, value so that is why it is true however if you see the above so there is no king inside this array right it is just a queen standard queen or something there is no king i mean uh, king like a keyword here so that's why it is going as false 
so that's the concept of exist uh, clause basically so finally we will see the what is a transform clause uh, it is uh, like wherever you are, you might be using a built in functions uh, that are uh, designed to do perform certain operations like you build a user defined functions or, uh, or to do some kind of uh, transformations right if, if you are doing some certain complex transformation so definitely you will use a user defined function however the user defined function having its own limitations uh, and uh, assets right and uh, when you are dealing especially with the uh, kind of a like a complex uh, uh, data types uh, using the udfs is not uh, definitely uh, a performance uh, issue when you are using that so better to use a transform function so where exactly it takes uh, the particular uh, complex data type and then on that complex data type it will basically apply a kind of a lambda function operate on each element in that array and you can as you can see here uh, you can perform any kind of a mathematical operation or any kind of a transformations here within the transformation clause so this will come very handy when you are uh, basically uh, want to apply existing function uh, existing function to each element in a particular array so as you can see this all the functions that we have seen uh, are uh, basically called as a uh, higher order functions right and uh, hope uh, this uh, the concept of uh, uh, explaining the uh, advanced sql uh, transformations in the databricks uh, was useful and uh, thanks thanks for watching